Boom, ladies and gentlemen, Palantir Technologies is continuing to show no signs of slowing down. Listen to these important remarks by the CTO that came out today. This is a unique moment for Palantir here. We have the, the tailwinds in the commercial business, the rate of adoption of AI, uh, the normative view that enterprise automation is where the value is, and the tool chain, you could say, you know, it's a 10-year overnight success. The foundational investments that we've made in ontology are the prerequisites that, that you need to put these uh, workflows into production quickly. You know, to get from a charismatic prototype to actual business value, I would say one of our customers, a very large U.S. insurance company, we've automated all of insurance underwriting. A process that used to take two weeks can now be done in three hours uh, with a 78-agent AI model. And you can think about that as not just the time saved, which is the first order benefit, but the second order benefit is if all of your competitors take two weeks to price risk and you take three hours, it's going to be a fundamental dislocation of the market. Just this is a unique... Palance here making some major moves, doing insurance underwriting in only three hours compared to competitors taking over two weeks shows you the disruption and the utility that Palantir can bring with AI to these different types of commercial sectors. Now, Palantir has a record close today and the biggest close that we've seen in the stock's history since it's gone public. Closing at 41.45, we're gonna be talking about what are some of the analysts saying and what was another big key component on why Palantir was the biggest gainer in the S&P 500 today. If you are a new or returning viewer, hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos, and of course, I'm not a financial advisor collecting all the data and dispatching it to you. Now, pop it up. Palantir officially closing at 41.45 and up even another 0.2% in the after hours. We see trading volume at 62 million and Palantir, the biggest gainer in the S&P 500 today is a major accomplishment. We see Palantir that had some resistance at that 40, but an important reversal being triggered here at the 38. Also in light of oil prices that reduced sending the market to higher highs, especially with Nvidia that's helping the broader market actually accumulate in market capitalization. Now, what we see with Palantir and why a possible reason that it could have led the S&P 500 today is not just to do to those important remarks by the CTO, but also we were seeing our capital so that software companies could have more room to benefit from the, benefit from the AI Boom. Now, a managing director from ARC indicated that data analytics and software firms like Palantir are poised to take AI market share from some of the mega cap tech stocks. We're talking things like Microsoft, Amazon, Google. And in this interview that we see here from ARC Invest Europe said that they could actually be a bigger player than what was once expected. Really getting involved into the cloud computing platforms and even taking market share from the cloud computing, computing platforms. If you take Microsoft, Amazon, and Google and put those market shares together and just think of a fraction of a percentage, that's a lot of money that can inflow into PLTR. And we're seeing more asymmetrical opportunities here. What they mean, what an ARK Invest is saying right here is that hardware and infrastructure, like NVIDIA, building hardware, have accounted for more than 80% of the value that has occurred over the past two and a half years as investors are pouring money into AI-related companies. And the ARK Invest is finding far more asymmetrical opportunities today in companies that are further down the AI stack. And that is including those that are in the SaaS industry and the leading competitors for software as a service. Palantir falls right into that pocket. And the fact that Palantir can provide these customized data and AI services tailored to the needs of specific clients is very, very bullish. Now, also, what we are seeing across the board for PLTR, talking about still a buy, that's the biggest question right now. In yesterday's video, we talked about any type of possible correction in PLTR, especially at these all-time highs, but also we laid out the fundamental path to $100 as a big article compared it to is PLTR in NVIDIA's early moments. They make some important and some interesting arguments in that article. Make sure you check out yesterday's video if you have not seen it. One thing that I am seeing on the forefront here is the analyst upgrades and downgrades. Downgrades. And what we're seeing is those analysts that even still maintain a hold or a sell rating are continuing to raise their price targets. And what we're seeing is the overall upper and lower bottom in terms of price targets from the analysts are starting to raise 
from the higher and the lower end. This is incredibly bullish for PLTR. And things, for example, we've seen Deutsche Bank right here increase their price targets from 20 to 21 and still continuing to give the stock a sell rating. And you also have different types of banks like Bank of America here that actually up their price objective on Palantir from 30 up to 50 bucks per share and gave the stock a buy rating. That's a pretty big jump that we saw on a report from Tuesday, September 10th right here. And even with those neutral ratings, like we're seeing for Goldman right here, raising their price targets from 14 to 16 bucks. So this is exactly what I mean by we're seeing the upper and the lower end that are both being raised. Positive outlooks for PLTR. And in terms of what we've been seeing for earnings reports and in terms of insider sellings, a lot of insiders like Alex Cart, Peter, we know and have been solding millions of dollars a share. We saw that in the mid-30s and Palantir is still continuing to accumulate in price. Also, another incredible bullish sign here, especially at those insiders. I talked about this. This was almost like closing the chapter in terms of uncertainty and a lot of you know a lot of FUD that comes out when insiders do sell. That chapter's been closed now, and now the outlook is what's the future for PLTR. In institutional inflows and outflows, we're starting to see large investors that are starting to move money and capital into Palantir. I think the maturity that this company received by getting included into the S&P 500, we're still seeing that inclusion effect that is taking place. And the fact that earnings now is November 1st, that's the estimated announcement. I don't think we have the official announcement date yet though. But nine cents earnings per share, earnings per share revisions, 11 in the last 90 days in the bullish direction. Really, really good things looking for this individual stock today. Now, on top of the market, we got the S&P 500, Dow Jones, you got the NASDAQ all doing well, up about a percent, especially here in the NASDAQ, up 1.4%. And with the S&P 500 jumping over here after we saw a little bit of a cooler day the day before, this is mostly due to the points of cooler oil prices that is helping lead the tensions, especially as these investors are still assessing the ongoing tensions that we're seeing within in the Middle East. Now, West Texas Intermediate, their oil futures dropped 4.6% on Tuesdays as basically they expected Israel's expected retaliation to the tensions that we have seen from Iran. Now, start of the new trading month also, we're seeing raising bond yields also weighing on the market with the 10-year treasury topping 4%. This comes in light of last Friday's September jobs report that was really a blockbuster jobs report. And we've still seen the market that is continuing to set these record highs. However, the major market is basically kind of waiting to see with this new news what's going to be happening with the Federal Reserve in terms of what they're going to be doing with interest rates. Right now, the probability is that they're not going to be seen as taking as aggressive future rate cuts. Given the labor market strength, given the resilience that we've been seeing in the economy, the recent macroeconomic data points have been pretty bullish for the market in terms of resilience. So with that being said, we're still expecting the Fed, it's kind of what the probability is pricing into the markets, to 25 basis point cuts by the end of the year. Now, an important thing to understand is they did make sure to say that they will do any change in direction. It's not a guarantee that the rate cut cycle, you know, will always just be the steady decline, that they will do any change in direction as long as they can try to keep that cooling target for inflation to around 2%. So things are subject to change by any time by the Fed, which can bring more implied volatility. Just a risk piece to acknowledge. NVIDIA doing a good job propping up the market today as we see a lot of bullishness coming in from NVIDIA, closing at 132. You can see up another 4% on the day, doing very well. Now, what we've been seeing from NVIDIA is an increase in demand for the new Blackwell platform, and specifically for this artificial intelligence. This is an AI summit that is rolled onto its second day. A lot of bullishness, a lot of enthusiasm, enthusiasm about what's been happening to Blackwell chips in terms of the demand. We have the CEO that recently came out and said that the demand is insane. So the fact that this AI chip leader right here is continuing to bring positive outlooks, not only to their individual stock, but to the AI economy and industry in general, this is making a positive impact on the market. So a lot of exciting things and a lot of bullishness coming across the board in today's market. I want to know, what do you guys think about Palantir? Do you think 40 is going to continue? Are we going to blow past those 40s, possibly testing 50? 
valuation right now is not a concern and i think we're seeing that however of course don't completely ignore the valuation pltr is trading at a very high premium but with the momentum we're seeing a lot of buying pressure behind it. Do you think this is here to stay or do you think we're gonna see a change in the market soon? I wanna know your comments down below. Peace out, take care, have a wonderful night.